and in white Must be an angel So he said Mr. Angel, I'm a stranger I don't know what's going on The last thing I remember was says that Jesus will descend from heaven with a loud shout and with a voice of an archangel and with a trump of God and he says that the dead in Christ will rise first and those who are alive who are in Christ will be caught up in the cloud and will meet the Lord in the air and I have a couple of questions to the people of Leviton Spa. That is your name written in God's book. Because the Bible declares that those whose name were not in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Another question that I have is this. That when the trumpet blows, would you be taken or would you remain? The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise up first. There will be a resurrection that is supernatural. And that supernatural resurrection will only happen to those who are in Jesus. It will happen to those who are in Jesus. And so today we come bearing the good news to bring you to Jesus and not to buildings. You see we have many temples like the cathedral that we're looking at today but it's empty because men are looking for life in buildings but the life is not in a building it's in Jesus Christ you see we've tied ourselves to religion and religion has given us laws that we cannot keep but the Bible says that Jesus came that he will fulfill the law he will not give us laws but he will give us his person but you see, because we love darkness rather than light, we will embrace religion so we can live in darkness and pretend like we are of God by claiming that we're Christians, we're professing Christians, but we're not in Him. And so the Bible says in the last days, those who are in Christ and not in churches, in synagogues, in Hindu temples, and in, in, in mosques, it says those who are in Christ. You see, without being in Christ, you will be in the midst of crisis and you'll be swallowed up in crisis. But when one is in Jesus Christ, in the face of adversities and calamities, you are able to be insulated from the crisis that we're in right now. 
We're in the verge of a World War III. We're in the midst of a pandemic. And vaccination and other programs and policies are not able to sustain life. And hence, in this hour, we need something. We need a person and not a something. We need Jesus, the government of God, that will be able to run our government and bring peace in our nation. In this very moment, people are looking for peace in Ukraine and in Russia. And we're implementing UN policies to bring peace. But now we're, we're placing sanctions and laws in order to restrain this war. You see, these laws have not been able to stop Putin from bombing Ukraine. See, the thing that will transform a personality like Putin or a person like Hitler or Bin Laden will be the message of the gospel. And the Bible declares according to the gospel that for God so loved the world that he sent his son. He didn't build buildings like we see right now. He sent his son because buildings don't shed blood. Buildings don't speak. Synagogues don't have voices, don't have a message. They are there to search to shelter a community of believers who believe in the Lord Jesus. And so right now many claim that the reason for the wars and the differences in this world is religion. But you see, religion is not what God gave us. He gave us his kingdom. He didn't give us a nationality either. Because as much as Jesus was born a Jew, he didn't come to speak on behalf of a Jewish culture, but came to reveal the culture of heaven. And today we come preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, because in the March 24, it said when the gospel of the kingdom of God is preached, then the end of the world will come. It will come for a witness. It will come the men who have not heard this gospel will have the opportunity to know the king of the kingdom. And so Jesus came not preaching the gospel of Israel, but he comes telling the people of Israel that prophecy is being fulfilled. Men have to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is near and is here. We see prophecy being fulfilled. Many believe in the 666 and the coming of the Antichrist. But they do not have faith in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we place our faith and our fears on the Antichrist system and the person of the Antichrist. But we do not fear God who is not going to come as a baby in a manger. But he's going to come as a ruling king that will come and judge the unrighteous. The Bible declares that in the book of Acts 17.30, it says the days and the times of our ignorance, God has winked, but now he commands all men to repent. Some have placed their faith or their, their approval and they justify themselves by the color of their skin and the color of their eyes. But you see, on that day, God will not judge man based on their skin color or their eye color. Or the amount of money that they have in their bank account. He will not judge them for the works they have done for the poor. They will not judge them for loving other communities. He will not judge men for being activists and humanitarians. He will judge men if they believe in his only begotten son. And the works that his only begotten son has done in order to give us salvation. That is where God will start. You see, we're not going to be judged for the sins we've committed. We're going to be judged for rejecting the message of the gospel, not having faith in it, and not embracing it with repentance. And so Jesus begins to tell the people, the, the Jews, because this was a religious nation. And in this very season, we see that we're living, our nations become so religious. We, we take sides and saying, I'm Muslim, I'm Christian, I'm Buddhist, I'm Shintoist, I'm all these kinds of things. But you see, the last time I checked, in the book of John, the chapter 3, a man called Nicodemus, a religious ruler in the synagogue, comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, I know no one can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus looks at this religious leader, the religious father, religious founder, religious custodian, and say, Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom, nor can you see it. 
And so our ability to see the invisible God, the one true God, the one who dwells in inapproachable life can only be seen when we become born again. My question to Leviton, God bless you. My question to Leviton today, are you born again? Because when you're born again, God gives you the eyes to see him. When you're born again, God gives you the DNA to be holy. Like he said, be ye holy for I am holy. Be ye perfect for I am perfect. You see, you will not be able to be perfect by visiting synagogues and being a church member or a synagogue member or a mosque member. That doesn't give you the capacity to be holy like the Lord. Until we become sons, then we begin to inherit his DNA. His DNA enables us to be like him and to speak like him and to move like him and to demonstrate his power and his presence to humanity. You see, God does not dwell in temples built by man's hands. He doesn't dwell in the boxes. He doesn't dwell in cathedrals. He dwells in the heaven. When you, read, when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you go like our Father who art in heaven. No, who art in the cathedrals? No, who art in the mosques? No, who art in the Hindu temple? Is our Father who dwells in heaven? He dwells in light unapproachable. He's invisible. The Bible declares that God is a spirit, and it says that he that worships the Lord must worship Him in spirit and in truth, not in the color of your skin or in your mindset with your money. It comes by having His spirit. The Bible declares that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. People of Leviticus. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And so we embrace our own methods and our own ways to God. We claim that there are many ways to God. But no, there's only one way. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man cometh to the Father. No man cometh to the Father who dwells in heaven. Maybe your father dwells in Mecca. Your father who is God dwells in the Kaaba. Your father who is God dwells in Japan or dwells in China. But the God, the true and one God, the one, the one and true God and his son whom he has sent, they dwell in heaven. Far above principalities and powers. This very God we speak about doesn't dwell in the three dimensional realm, but dwells in a higher dimension. A dimension that is beyond this box. You see, the God that we're speaking about and this gospel that I preach wants to reveal the God that dwells out of the box. But yet that dwell, that God that dwells out of the box had a love for humanity. The Bible declares that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God seeing that man has fallen short of his glory due to our rebellion in the beginning, in the garden. When God said, Thou shalt not eat of the knowledge of good and evil, but the very day that thou will eat, oh man, you will die. What kind of death was this? Because when we read the text, it sounds a bit contradictory. Because God, who is a God after his word, he said, Man will surely die. That day you will die. That day. But when I read the text in the book of Psalms, the Bible declares a day to the Lord. It's a thousand years and a thousand years is a day to the Lord. Adam never lived to be more than a thousand, which is a day to the Lord. That is one of contradiction. Many will say there are contradictions in the Bible. But a day to the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. Adam never lived to be more than a thousand. He lived only to be 930 years. And today, he said the day man will eat that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he will surely die. That day Adam died, something in him that enables him to fellowship with God and commune with God died. That is the spirit. Because the Bible declares in the John, the Gospel of John chapter 4, it said we will worship him in spirit and in truth. There is a faculty in a man that preserves a man in the body, which is the breath of Elohim, the spirit that dwells in us. You see, our ventilators is not what preserves us and keeps us in the body, but it's the breath of God that keeps a man in the body and preserves him to live the life in this realm. The moment the breath of God departs from us, our soul leaves the body. And that is why we define as a physical death, a separation of the soul and the, and the body. But God speaks of a life, a death and a life. What is that death? That is a separation from God. 
When a man is in the body and the soul is in the body, but yet they're disconnected from source. They're disconnected from the Heavenly Father's covering. They're disconnected from the Heavenly Father's fellowship and communion. They experience what we call eternal death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin separates us, people of Levinson. It separates us from seeing God. It separates us from hearing His voice. It separates us. It separates us from, from, from experiencing God and, and seeing His expressions of love, and His expressions and His emotions. God loves. God smiles. God embraces. But when we're separated, we cannot experience any of the expressions of God. And because we are falling short of the glory of God, we embrace religious doctrines that don't give life, but put you in bondage and instead. You see, religion was built for governments. Religion is what governments use to oppress, to manipulate, and to control. But the kingdom of God is a kingdom of families. And God deals with humanity as his family. You see, God wanted to have families, so he created us that he will have one big family with sons. In the kingdom of God, everyone is deep as royalties, as sons. Even the angels are sons of God. In the Hebraic definition, it says, Ban Elohim, sons of God, sons of Jehovah. We are sons. And so he calls the children of Israel and says, you are a peculiar nation, a royal priesthood. We've rejected our royalty which is in heaven and we've embraced the royalties of the devil. We sold our soul to the devil that we might enjoy the permanent things of this life. But God has a higher life. And so we, we miss God in our quest to enjoy the things of this world. We sell our soul in our quest to be popular. We sell our soul in our quest to amass wealth. We sell our souls in our quest to be connected with certain um, top networks and people of this time. We sell our souls that men will know us for popularity. We sell our soul to the devil that we might be known for doing things in this season. But the Bible says, what will it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, if he gains everything on this earth and loses his soul. You see, it is your soul that will be judged in the lake of fire. It is your soul that will experience gnashing of teeth and burns and agony. Because you see, your soul is made up of your will, mind and emotion, reasons and conscience and many other things. It has a way of expressing itself and hence the reason of your soul why you go to a psychologist. Because they specialize in stabilizing the instability of the soul. The word psychology comes from the Greek word suke, which means soul. That is why medication cannot deal with the things of the soul because it's an intangible and, and thing that cannot be held or touched. And so we need therapies. But another main thing we do need is the gospel. The best therapy is somebody who is depressed and down is the hearing of the gospel. It's hearing that there is a God who sits in heaven that is willing to listen to our cry, to our pain, to our losses, to our bereavement. You see, many do not have hope. And that's why when we lose relative to death, we cry and we bereave. But Paul said to the people of Thessalonians who had lost relatives who were in Christ, he said, I will not have you ignorant that those who sleep in Jesus, they will surely rise again. And so when we lose relatives, we have this hope. We cry, yes, they've left. But we know that where they are, we too will meet them someday. In the bosom of the Father. But you see, when the wages of sin begins to bring death to us which means one day we'll be separated from the very people that we love we'll be separated by pain we'll be separated by fire by agony but what will bring us together is the lord jesus where jesus is not known the people will experience chaos disasters confusion sicknesses where we have rejected jesus 
Christ, we begin to embrace the crisis from the pits of hell. And today, people of Leviton, the time is being fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. God is saying, repent, repent. And let me tell you something. Repentance can only be fulfilled when one is in a pursuit to Jesus. Because many have been able to stop certain behaviors like drinking alcohol. They stop lying. They stop beating their wives. Stop bullying women. People have stopped many other crimes. You see, the criminal system has a way of us deterring us from committing certain crimes. But it hasn't got the capacity to cause you to pursue God. You see, repentance is, is you departing from your sins and pursuing the Lord Jesus day in and day out. That is why a Muslim can repent. I tell you, I've become Muslim and I no longer smoke. I no longer drink. I no longer do the things I used to do. I no longer sell drugs or use drugs. I no longer lie. No longer do I behave like a hypocrite. The monks can repent to some extent. But the repentance unto God is different from other religious definition or approach or practices of repentance. This repentance is the gift of God. God gives a person who is willing to follow Jesus. God begins to do a work in our hearts. He takes the desire for the things of this world and gives you the desire for the things of God. Your hunger that you used to have for sex diminishes and your hunger for drugs is taken away god begins to do a thing in your heart that empowers you to live holy men will see you following jesus and say you need to go and see a psychiatrist or you've lost your mind many have deemed me to be crazy but i see myself as being christ-like what has made me Christ-like is not because of my check going. Nor is it because I preach this gospel. It's evidence that God has done something to my heart that gives me boldness and a hunger to pursue Him. I give all credit to Him and not to me. I give credit to Him because it's the works of the cross. And it's the person and the reality of God made manifest in the flesh that has done something to us. What will save our city, our nation, our continent from the, the, the plagues and the pandemics and the earthquakes and the famine that we're experiencing is a visitation of God. It's a visitation of God. Our nation needs a visit from heaven. Heaven needs to visit us. The ordinances of heaven needs to be released to overturn satanic ordinances. We need a priesthood from heaven. See, many of our priesthoods in our temples and centuries and our synagogue have disappointed us. We've seen priests becoming pedophiles and sleeping with the young ones. You see, our centuries we have built have disappointed us because we see men of God that claim to be men of God sleeping with the daughters of Zion, abusing them impregnating them and aborting babies at the same time you see the buildings we have built have disappointed us because they're funding wars in the days of the days of the holocaust it was the catholic church that helped funded hitler to kill more jews you see our temples we have built have disappointed us you see, when you put your trust in man, you will embrace the curses that comes with it. You will see the greed that is behind it. Because with man, because we're falling short of the glory of God, we cannot do good. But when a man comes to Jesus, begins to walk with Jesus, not be a church goer, or a church ruler, or a synagogue ruler, or a man, or a priest, that claims to be priests but begins to walk with God God begins to transform that individual from an uncommon person from a common personality to an uncommon personality that has the DNA of God the image and the likeness of God 
and by virtue of our life God's DNA, His image, His likeness, we're able to, to allow God to express Himself to the people around us so they can experience the true and one love, which is the God love. The kind of love that restores, the kind of love that doesn't envy, the kind of love that is kind, the kind of love that is long suffering, the kind of love that doesn't remember, the kind of love. You see, many of us claim to be part of the LGBT network and we claim that we have love. But the moment the truth of God that is revealed, God's opinion concerning your practices, your practices, your practices, you begin to hate that organization that reveals God's opinion concerning your homosexual practices, your lesbianism practices. I know somebody will claim that you could be gay and not be sleeping or having intercourse with another fellow brother. But you see, when Jesus came on the scene, he said something which was powerful. You don't need to fornicate with a woman to commit a sin. By virtue of looking at her and having a desire for her, you've already sinned. And that is why today in the name of Jesus, our heart has the capacity to sin. We are sinners not only because of what we do, but we are sinners because of who we are. We are sinners because we have inherited a broken DNA, a rebellious DNA, a rebellious DNA that hates God. The evidence of a, a, a broken DNA that hates God is people who hate God because when they lost their relatives, they cried on God and God did not heal their parents. Many felt rejected by God. Because when they did call on him, he didn't turn up. And they lost their ones and they become Darwinists. They become, they become evolutionists. They become atheists. Because God did not come in the time when they needed him. But the question I have for you, when God was calling you, in the time he was preparing you for this disaster that was about to happen, did you answer to the call of God? You see, God keeps on knocking our door. He said, Behold, in the book of Revelation, He said, Behold, Lemonton, I stand at the door and knock. He that opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and him in me. You see, we have decided to dine with the devil. You see, many of us have dined with the devil, not only do we eat with the devil, we sold our soul to the devil. We become slaves of the devil. We build societies around the devil. We become Satanists. We become promoters of his agenda, promoters of his plan. And you see, everything that is tied around the devil, he could be 99% good, 1% bad. You see, two wrongs don't make a right. And force is force, and force and truth cannot be together. It's true all the way. And you see, because the devil, he's, he's been rebellious from the beginning. He's the father of lies. He's the father of all religions because he knows religion disconnects one from having fellowship and communion with the one true God and his son whom he has sent. And today I'm here to call all men and limit them that God has loved you with an everlasting love. You see, God did not die because we're, we're he did not die because we did something good. The Bible declares that yet whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died. What will make God do this? David did not understand God's love. He said, what is man that I am mindful of him? What is man? What is it that God will die for us and bleed for us? What is it that it is in man that will make God stalk him? The Bible says he knows the number of your hair. That is a bit freaky. God knows the number of everyone's hair. That is a demonstration of love. The Bible declares that he knows the motives, the intents of our hearts. Nothing is hid before him. The love of God. He said, what is man that I visited him in the morning with your mercy? You see, the Bible declares in the days of Jonah, he said, those that observe life vanities, they forsake the love of God. The tender mercies, the loving kindness of God. They forsake it. Our pursuit is for things that are fair. Our, our pursuit is for likes and hearts on Facebook, on Instagram. Our vanities makes us cleave to our phones, cleave to our jobs, cleave to our money. But we forget that 
what will it profit you when you have cleaved to these things? Because when you die, you're not going to take your phone with you. When you die, you're not going to take your money with you. When you die, you're not taking your investment with you. Even when you die, you're not taking your beauty with you. You're not taking the color of your skin with you. You're not taking the color of your eye with you. You're not taking your culture with you. You're not taking your family with you. You're just going to stand before your maker one day. And you have to make account for what you have done on the earth. And people of Leviton are here to tell you, is your name going to be in the book of life when you die and you stand before your maker? Do you have answers? Have you prepared yourself for the afterlife? You see, many of us prepare ourselves when we leave our children. We, we do what we call life insurance policy to take care of our funerals, to take care of many things so that our children are not ensnared with debts. And you see, God did the same thing. The Bible said the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the world. His blood took care of our life insurance policy. The Bible declares that a good man, a good father, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. God left us an inheritance that will save us from eternal death. And so he sent his son even before time. He shed his blood even before time. The demonstration of what happened 2,000 years ago was something that was done in eternity before the foundations of the world. It was there to bring reconciliation. It was there to bring things back to its original state. The Bible says everything is paid by blood. That is why people need blood. Even in the satanic kingdom, the people do rituals. They need blood to pacify rocks and wolves to increase strength and power to move in the supernatural. There is power in the blood. The Bible declared that there is life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Hence, many people are part of all kinds of pagan practices and they drink blood. They need blood. They seek blood. There is life in the blood. And today in the name of Jesus, we're here to speak to the people of Leviton that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and we need to repent. We need to repent and begin to believe in the gospel, the gospel of Jesus. And that is why today I come not preaching my own opinion, but revealing the opinion of the heavenly father who dwells in heaven. And his opinion, he says, I have winked in the days of your ignorance, in your seasons of ignorance, I have winked. But in this time, I have set a day where I will judge the unrighteous. And so therefore, I'm here to warn you, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, we have looked for salvations in buildings, in religion, but we have not sought him who gives life. We must seek Jesus. Many have found salvation in the pursuit for Muhammad, in the pursuit for Krishna. They found salvation in the pursuit for Buddha. But Jesus said the only way to the true life, the Bible declared that this is life eternal, that you might know the one and only true God and his son whom he has sent. So if you do not know Jesus, you will not have life. If you do not know Jesus, you will not have truth, which will set you free. The Bible says you will know the truth, the truth, and you shall be free. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth. So the one who knows that I am the way and I am the truth will have the life and will have liberty and will have freedom, spirit, soul, and body. It's one thing to be financially free and to be in spiritual bondage. Hence, that's why many are financially free, but are not spiritually and psychologically free, and they commit suicide. You see, money can buy happiness. Money can even save you from pancreatic cancer. People have money and are dying of cancer. They have three weeks or two weeks to live and a couple of days to live. And yet, in the, in the, in, in the face of this season, they do not seek the God who they're going to meet in the afterlife. They cry in pain and seeking remedies to, to be remitted from their cancer, but they're not preparing to meet Jesus. You see, this is the time when things like that come, we set our house in order and we prepare to meet our maker. But because
because we're falling short of the glory of God, we become Darwinists. We reject the idea that there is God. We reject the idea that he has loved you in an everlasting life and he has sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him. You see, many of you sing the hymns, but you do not know God. We sing hymns, but we don't know him. You see, it's in him that we have life. That him is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That him is not Buddha, it's not Baha, it's not Krishna. It's not Mohammed, it's not Elijah, it's not Moses. That him is Jesus of Nazareth. That him shed his blood for you. That him was the word that was in the beginning, that was with God, that was God. That that him is the one that had life and men called the light, the light of men. That him, that him was God made manifest in the flesh that came like a child and was crying in a, in a manger. He was the one the angels praised. He said light has come into the world. That him is the reason why you have Easter, you have Christmas, that him. Is the one that shed his blood. You see, the blood of Muhammad and Buddha could not save you. The blood of, of, of Moses and Elijah could not save you. None of them, their blood could save. And none of them is their tomb empty except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My brother, God bless you. I pray that you will come to light. Glory to God. I pray that you will be touched. Man, there's no life in drinking alcohol. I know there might be pain in here, but you can only receive peace in Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's too early for alcohol. God wants to bring peace in your life. What's your name? Simon. Your name is what? Simon. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that Simon will have an encounter with you right now. He will have an encounter with Jesus. Father, you will take away the bondage of addiction with alcohol and you will make him addicted to you. I pray that you will have a relationship with Jesus than having a relationship with alcohol. Father, I pray that you will have your mercy. You extend your mighty hands and pull him out of every pit in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you, Simon. God bless you. And so people of Lemon, I'm not coming here judging. You see, because we're falling short of the glory of God, when the gospel is being preached, we see it as preachers of the gospel, as men that are judgmental. And you are correct to some extent, but the point is the preachers of the gospel are not condemning. Because there's a difference between judging another individual and condemning another person. You see, condemning means you have no door of escape. But when the judgment of God is given, it's there to judge your consequences and give you information information on how to come out of bondage. God bless you, Simon. I pray that you'll find Jesus. You'll find Jesus. You'll find Jesus. You'll find Jesus. Today is that day. Seek him. Hallelujah. So people of Lemon, today, I'm not coming with condemning words, but I come with encouraging words that will help you make the right judgment to make a well-informed decision that to follow Jesus to choose life was to choose death it was God that said I lay before you life and death curse and blessing and God tells the people of Israel choose life choose blessing I lay before you alcohol or Jesus choose Jesus leave alcohol I lay before you your sexual immorality and I lay before you Jesus I say choose Jesus choose him because in him was life and the life was the light of man in him we have redemption in him we have forgiveness of sins in him we have reconciliation with God in him we are sanctified in him we find favor with God in him we find blessing and I'm not talking of just normal blessing we have we find eternal blessing blessing that transcends this life that follows us in the afterlife in him we have a seat with God in him we have a place in God's heart in him in him we have life eternal and so I I lift up the name of Jesus which is the name above every name the Bible declares that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow 
and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so today, people of Leamington, as I come to an end of my, of my, of my message of the gospel of Jesus, I leave you with his person. I don't leave you with a direction to a temple, to a synagogue, to a mosque, but I pray to Jesus that he's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the love of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He's that lamb that pacifies the wrath of God. He's that lamb that, that shed his blood for the atonement of our souls and the blood and out of ordinances that was contrary to us. He's the love that was stripped and persecuted and demonstrated his love. There is no other love that we can experience or observe except by looking up to Jesus. Maybe you saw Jesus in temples and synagogues. You saw Jesus in songs. And you love the hymns, but you don't know him. And today as I come to a close with a blast of the shofar and with a sound of heaven, by that sound, I want to remind you, this is the sound of, of Jesus. This is a sound that reminds us of his death and his resurrection. That you see, this is the reason why you celebrate your Christmas and your Easter's. You see, your, 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 your life and your atonement is not found in your Easter bunnies and your Christmas tree. It's found in the blood that was shed. And you see, you see many of you observe chakras and rocks and you find life. You have colors of rocks that helps you get the good energy. You see, energy doesn't save nor does it give redemption. Nor does it give forgiveness. That is why we're being beaten by the guilt of our sins and our actions that we've done against our own families. And God gives you a person. He doesn't give you laws. He gives you his person. That you might have fellowship with him and communion with him. And you will be able to walk with God and have peace. There is peace in Jesus because he's the prince of peace. You see, for there to be peace... It will not be released from the UN. You will not find peace in the synagogues. You will not find peace in temples. You will find peace in having a fellowship relationship with God. And having a covenant with Him. By covenant we inherit the blessing of the kingdom. That is why you must be born again and repent of your sins. And your life can never be the same. My mother was dying from pancreatic cancer. And she needed a visitation from God. 2017, I saw the power of God manifest mightily. And today she's alive. She's alive and she's blown the mind of doctors. They said we're doctors and we don't believe in the supernatural. But you are a different kind of being. Because an encounter with the Lord extended their life. Is there anybody that needs life right now? Because Jesus said, I come that you might have life abundant. Not only physical life, not only psychological life, not only spiritual life, but also eternal life. You see, many have spiritual experiences or spiritual life by doing yoga practices and Buddha practices. They get all these spiritual uh, uh, and visitations. Many have knowledge. And so they engage knowledge by empowering their soul. They obtain soul power by knowledge. Some receive life, physical life, by eating healthy and having a good diet so they can extend their life. But when you have done all these things, many of us lack eternal life. Eternal life is fellowship with God who dwells in eternity, whose name is holy, the higher lofty one that dwells with those who have a broken and a contrite heart. He dwells in a hard place. His name is Holy. His name is Jesus. Hence, we read the book of the revelation of Jesus. But all we see is revelation of the Antichrist. When we read the book of Revelation, it's to reveal the one who died on the cross and shed his blood for us. We read the book of Revelation, we see the manifestation and the bondage and the wickedness of the Antichrist. But we do not see the goodness of God that is the Alpha and Omega that will end the destiny of the Antichrist. And so today we preach the gospel of Jesus. The one that destroyed the false prophets and the antichrist. The one that puts the knock the number 666 and gives you the mark of Jesus. That will give you access to eternity. 
His mark will have your name written in the book of life. His mark will give you life eternal. His mark will give you the blessings of God. And people of Leamington, we need to seek Jesus. Some place their faith in the pronunciation of his name or the accent about which you are saved. Accents don't give eternity. Pronunciation of his name don't give life. It is found in faith in the gospel of his person and the works he has achieved for us. And it's found in repenting from your sins and having a desire to follow God for the rest of your life. And as I come to a close, people of Leamington, repent. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Prophecies is being fulfilled. As many know, they know the apocalypse is being fulfilled before our very eyes. We are at the verge of a World War Three, and we need the Messiah to save our nation, to save our continent, to save Europe who were once missionaries. We are falling short of that glory. We are noting historically for being missionaries who sent the gospel to nations, but now we become haters of the very thing our fathers did. The very gospel that was the founding foundation of our constitution we've rejected. And so very soon our nation will implode because we've rejected the one and only true God and his son whom he has sent. We become lovers and respecters of other religion. But the last time I checked, Jesus did not respect the Sadducees. They were religious denominations, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Jesus was a hater. He had no respect for religion. But hence, we teach our children respect all religions. But Jesus was not a respecter of religion. So he, he damned the Pharisees. Read it. I'm not saying it. And if I be a follower of Jesus, I will follow that same line. Because our respect for religion doesn't give eternity. It doesn't heal the sick. It makes you nice before men. But you see, man's, man's curriculum or man's book, good book about you will not give you access to the kingdom of God. It is what is written in God's book that will give us access to his kingdom. And to people of Leamington, I come with this thing that saddens me. I've come from far, far back as Greenwich, London Greenwich, to preach the gospel that the United Kingdom will be saved. But it will start by the preaching of the gospel. The Bible says, how shall they hear? Except he sends a preacher. And my prayer is that at the preaching of the gospel, will, uh, a faith will be ignited in us. The love will be restored in us. Our pursuit will not be the pursuit for money, for fame, for likes, for prosperity, for, for all these things that don't save souls. But that you pursue Jesus. And as I blow the shofar, I say repent. Repent, limited, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. shall be transformed the corruptible inherent incorruptible the, Im the mortal immortality by the trump of God by the same trump the Bible declared that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a loud shout with a voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ will be snatched up by the blast of the shofar there will be a miraculous translation a miraculous transportation by the sound of his trumpet. My question to Leviton at the blast of the shofar on that day, would you be taken or would you remain? Would you be caught up or would you stay where you are to suffer in the lake of fire? Rapakadoba Sikapa.
Benson, lift you up, you doors. Father, Lord God, we plead the blood of the Lamb over these gates. We pray for a revival and awakening to the reality of the person of Jesus. To the reality of the thing that he has done for us. For Lord God, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit. Let the spirit of the Lord blow over this place and let there be an awakening. Let men awaken to who God is and the son whom he has sent. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus to make atonement for sins. We pray that every sin committed by this city, Lord God, that will bring God's judgment be averted. We pray that God, your blessing will remain. The blessing of salvation. The blessing of the forgiveness of sins. We pray that men will come to light and have a desire for Jesus. We pray that they will encounter the love of God at the hearing of the gospel. We pray that men will seek you who oh, in the hour where you can be found. Father, Lord God, as the doors of heaven are open and the windows of heaven are open, let the ladder of our Lord Jesus Christ be established. Let there be an ascending and descending of angels, angels of deliverance, angels of salvation, angels of healing, angels of revelation. Let there be visitation of the person of God in dreams and vision. Let men enter into trances and encounter Jesus. And Father, Lord God, there be anyone who is depressed, I pray by the reason of the anointing, every broken heart will be mended. I command and declare the Father Lord today, let those who are in prison houses, straight houses, will be set loose in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that every handwriting, demonic spells, enchantment, divination that has held the people bound, we break cauldrons, we command people free from pots, satanic pots, satanic coffins, evil trees that men are tied to. Father, we set them loose in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. We command witchcraft sorcery to bow at the name of Jesus. We command them to repent or die in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, have your way in limiting. Let the altar, O oh Lord God, of prayer and supplication be erected. Father, let it be the day a new dawn and let, me, and let the revivals of all the world's revival come to this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name, the name of Jesus, be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we love you that you have loved this city with an everlasting love and you will not reject this city. And we declare that those marks of rejection over the city because of their rebellion, Father Lord God, is blotted out. Let there be reconciliation. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we give you honor, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. What about you? What about me? Hallelujah. My brother Chino. Let him be. Let me know. I'm about to go to Nomhampton. From Nomhampton, I'm moving straight to. Um, let him take him um, as he To Leicester and. Oh, and I'll be down by God. God bless you, saints.
sister sees the story of a brother who slept and woke up in forever land. He looked around. God bless you. God bless you, saints, man. Thank you for praying and standing with me. Let me in. May to declare that let me in shall be saved. I'll be coming here. Amen. Let me in will be saved by Baba Chino, man. We can't give up on let me in. We just gotta keep on praying. You know, the message of God endures forever. Amen. He will endure. Let the enduring mercy lead men to repentance. Uh -huh. It must lead men to repentance. We're gonna continue to pray. We're gonna raise an altar of prayer here in Lemon. And I tell you, there's gonna be a revival in Lemon. I don't care how hard their hearts are. We're gonna continue to preach this gospel so that men will come to life. So God bless you, my brother. Let me um, you know, keep on praying. Don't give up. Don't give up. See, the enemy will come like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord will lift up the standard, and the standard is being raised. Every time I come here, I feel something is breaking in the atmosphere. I feel the anointing today like never before. And today we'll continue this thing. I'll be back here hopefully next month. Amen. We must raise an awakening prayer hub here. We need a hub. We need an altar. We need a gathering of praying saints in Lemon to pray for an awakening and revival in the land. And so if you want to join the awakening prayer hubs and get connected with other intercessors that will support you in breaking the grounds of and breaking the grounds of Lemon. Remember, Brother Gino.